Hey, welcome or oh, welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. What I do know is that the eyeshadow look today was done using a palette which looks like it's duping a high-end palette. However, this palette came out before the high-end palette. And after the high-end palette came out, they changed the cardboard carrier on this palette to match the high-end palette, because why not? The palette in question, if you haven't already read the description, or the thumbnail, or the title of this film, is the Beauty Glazed Perfect Palette. Might help if my fringe would behave itself so you could actually see the eye look, wouldn't it really? So you can see I've got a really nice sort of mauve I mean this to me is neutral, this is pretty much what I would go to for a neutral, if I had to you know, I had like 15-20 minutes to chuck some colour on my eyes. These are the colours I would go for, rather than browns. So, if you want to see exactly how I achieved this look, and how these performed, my friend, you're in the right place. Here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Right, I will have shown you this in the intro, or I will do when I film it. Um, I've got quite a few palettes from Beauty Glazed. I've got the dupe they did for the first two Huda palettes, the Rose Gold and the Desert Dusk. I've also got um, one of the little uh, palettes that they did duping the nine pan palettes. However, this particular palette of theirs, I first saw this 2017-ish. It was definitely either tail end of 2017 or right at the very, very beginning of 2018. And to be honest, it didn't really appeal to me because you know, reg regular followers know that I, I like bright, colourful eyeshadows, and this just didn't appeal. And then Huda brought out her perfect nude, or whatever, whatever she's calling it, the nude reload, the, the nude, pack, new nudes. That was it, new nudes. And I looked at it and I thought, I've seen that before. Where have I seen that before? So I scroll back through, because whenever I see a palette and I think, oh, that looks interesting, um, I screenshot it, chuck it into a folder in case I want to talk about it on one of my Hell Yeah Woe well Knows, which I haven't done for ages now, I'm on a low buy. Um, and I found the screenshot that I'd done of this. So, admittedly, this outer sleeve was different. They have changed this outer sleeve since Huda bought her palette out. The outer sleeve was originally like this. But the inside of it looked like this. Even down to having a concealer on this bottom corner. So, I bought it. And I thought I'd give it a try because it appears that um, whilst they duped Huda's early palettes, it would seem that Huda duped one of theirs. And then they just took advantage of the fact and changed their outer sleeve to look like her one because why not? So, a uh, little bit of housekeeping if you're new to my channel. Hi, hello, how are you? Um, my tutorials are aimed at all skill levels from people who have never picked up a brush before to complete experts. So I talk you through every single step, I do all the blending in real time. 
um, and because of chronic pain I very often have to stop because the, the tiny little movements that I make with the blending sends shooting pains um, up my arm and to my shoulder. So if you find that I'm talking through things a little bit too slowly for you, there's a speed button. Feel free to speed me up. I will sound like a chipmunk and my calming dulcet tones will be a little bit more squeaky. But hey, you know, <laughs> I really don't mind if you speed me up. Um, once I zoom you in, uh, I will do my usual talk through on um, how people with hooded eyes can follow my tutorial. Uh, again, if you are regular viewers, you can probably skip that bit and just shoot forward to the point where I'm actually putting colour onto my eyes. Well, my lids, obviously. Right, face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed. I've actually been using a different moisturiser because um, in the summer I had been using this one, the Olay Complete Lightweight Day Fluid Normal Oily SPF 15. But I found in the winter it wasn't really moisturising enough, so I picked up this uh, it's L'Oreal Age Perfect Cell Renewal Rosy Tone Cream. It was a bit of a bugger to get hold of, but it was uh, recommended by um, Emily, as in the Emily Wants palette and the Emily Needs palette. And I've followed her for years, and I. I I trust her recommendation. She's one of the few larger booty gurus that I still trust her recommendations on. Um, I managed to track this down from a company which had a... It didn't specify that it wasn't in the UK. I found out it wasn't in the UK when I got smacked with uh, customs charges on arrival. So, L'Oreal, I really hope... If you're watching this, of course, like, L'Oreal's watching me. I've got less than 500 subscribers, for goodness sake. Um, if you're watching this L'Oreal, can we please have this in the UK? Because I really like this. Thank you so much. Uh, and obviously I've got a separate SPF that I use because I don't believe this has got SPF in it. Uh, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't list an SPF on it anyway. So, if it doesn't list it, I assume it hasn't got one. Right. On my eyelids, all I have got so far is Revolution Conceal and Define concealer which I have set with Coty Airspun as I always do with my eyes. Now when I look straight ahead you can see all of my mobile lid from inner corner to outer corner so I don't have a hooded lid. If you don't see that you either have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. What I do have is deep set eyes and a lot of people with deep set eyes mistakenly think they have hooded lids because we do experience some of the same issues with transference of shimmers up onto our upper lid. If I use this brush handle to completely cover my mobile lid this side and then close my eye, you can see I've got as much mobile lid again that folds and tucks back in. So I do have that issue of I can follow my crease line, my, my socket line when I'm doing my crease work, but then if I put a shimmer on, instead of being able to just follow the shape of my physical eyeball, I kind of have to come a lot higher up because I do get transference onto the upper lid. So I completely understand the issues that people with hooded lids suffer from. However, it does give me a nice lot of canvas space here so I can really show you clearly um, the different colours and stuff and how I blend it. Now, if you've got hooded lids, you can still follow my tutorials. All you need to do, get a brush, something like this, flat top brush or a pencil brush, and with your eye open, just sketch out where you would need your crease line to fall. So, pretend you can't see my mobile lid here. I would just start a crease line here just above. So I'm creating a mobile lid from my static lid. Obviously this is going to reduce the space between your crease and your brows. Always raise your brows when you're applying eyeshadow because you know I'm 44, 
I've lost 10 stone. The skin on my eyelids moves. It's, yeah, it happens. I know 20 year olds who've never been fat, beautiful physiques and still have um, less taut eyelid skin genetically. The other thing you can do is uh, look at the brushes that we're using. Now I'm, I usually start off with brushes like this. A big fluffy blending brush and then I come down to a more tapered brush. Now whatever the size of the head of the brush, that's how far it's going to blend out. Okay, so obviously if you've moved your crease up, you're going to be blending up and through your eyebrow and up the top. So when I'm using this brush, if you have got either lower brows or you've had to move your crease up, you need to start with something more like this, a more tapered one. When I then move down to this one, this tapered one, you need to use something like this. Now this is a tapered crease brush. This one's from Coastal Sense. So you can see it's still really, really loosely packed so that it still blends nicely. But it comes right up to a point. So you can really control how far your shadow blends out. Um, I'm actually going to be using, I might try, actually no, I'm not going to try, not, I've got a, a Sigma brush that a friend gave me, which I was going to start trying, but I want to use a brush that I know so that I can see how this particular palette performs. So I'm going to go in with, this is the Royal and Land Nickel Chic Pro Crease Brush, as you can see. Two quid, professional wake up brush softest best blending brush I've ever had loved it so much I've ordered two more <laughs> right um, I have done swatches of this I will put it up on screen um, and I'll talk you through the colors so we've got khaki which is a cream color that's almost my skin color which is really not khaki chrome peachy rosy marron brick Bisque, Blink, Scarlet, Dubai, Gold, Passion. Then there's the concealer. I'm, I can't decide whether I'm going to swatch the concealer or not. Camel, Cocoa, Clay, Umber and Raw. Okay. Hello, I'm back again. Right. Although I have set my eyelids with my Coty Airspun, because there's a matte powder in here which is close to my skin tone or, you know, one or two shades lighter, this, this khaki, which is not khaki, um, because powders from the same palette do tend to blend best on themselves, I'm just going to gently buff this khaki colour, which is not khaki, all over my lid, from lashes to brow, just to help the colours blend. I'm actually tapping off into my colour switch, but because the... Um, the sponge is getting a bit worn now, it doesn't take the colour off as well. I'm actually using a clean washcloth. Sorry about that. Someone ringing me from Sierra Leone. Yeah. I just love getting these bloody calls. The thing is, it's like... Do they really... I, I, I know that I don't know anybody in Sierra Leone, so I'm not going to answer the... Poxy phone call. Right, what was I saying? Oh yeah. Um, I'm using a clean washcloth to change colours on my brush when I get to that stage. Okay, so this is so not what I would usually go for. So I'm kind of, I really don't know which colours to go for. But I'm going to start off with Bisque, which is... Um, like a mauvey tone, which is, is kind of, you know, you know, me and purples, it, it, it always happens. So we're going to start off on the outer edge here, and we're going to do windscreen wiper movements in and back out again, just to lay our crease level down. Um, I always start off here, because if it, if it does deposit too much powder, it's much easier to blend it out this side than it is over here, where your nose gets in the way. Okay, so we're just going to start off. I'm following my physical eye socket. If you've had to lay a crease line down, you follow that. So I'm just going to buff backwards and forwards in a windscreen wiper movement just to lay that down. Okay, maybe I don't need to tap off quite as much because I don't mind actually when 
um, shadows go on like that, so long as they build. Because at least then it's not too scary for newbies. They don't suddenly get a crap ton of, of pigment and have to try and blend it out, you know. Think subculture. Right. What I'm going to do now is tiny little circular movements because it very gently moves the skin on your eyelid and helps prevent any white gapping, which is a dead giveaway to your age. Okay? So, we're going to start here. Stay in contact with that line. We're just going to do little circles across to the middle. And then keeping our brush moving and without lifting it off the skin, we're going to move up a little bit, reverse the direction, and slightly overlapping the first bit, come back out again. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I can go up again, but I'm going to need to put more pigment on the brush. So I can go up again, go back to the original direction, and come back along. Now, I like to leave four or five mils or about a standard brush width from the lowest part of my brow um, because it's it's much more youthening it, it raises the look of the brows it lets the brow highlight stand by itself especially if you're using an all shimmer look which I do very often um, and it's also um, a more up-to-date way of, of actually doing your eyeshadow you don't really take it up to the brows like we used to in the 80s and 90s right okay so I just want to see how well this colour builds on itself. I always struggle here and here to get pigment to lay down simply because of my skin texture in that area and I do tend to have to work a little bit harder even with you know loose pigments which by definition are the most pigmented pigments because you're not having to work at putting them on. So when I, if you do have a, an area where you're finding it difficult to get pigment to build up Instead of doing the circular movements, just tap it into place and keep moving the brush around so that you're, you're still blending it out but you're kind of patting the pigment on rather than, you know, doing the, the circular movements. Okay, that's, that's built up to a reasonable level, I guess. I'm not too worried about this bit here building up because I'm going to put deeper colours on. Right, so now we're going to repeat exactly what we've just done over here on the other eye. So we're going to start off with our windscreen wipers, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And then we're going to do our little helicopters. And I didn't tap off. As you can see, from the fallout. I do get more fallout with this eye than with my other eye though because this is the eye that I'm blind in and it got pulled around an awful lot when I was a child and by child I mean you know five six years old so nearly 40 years ago now. Um, so I do have permanent very very deep creasing here now, with the lighter colours, I can normally get away with doing the circular movements. Once I get to the deeper colours, I, I normally have to gently stretch my lid out, because I will get barcoding here, but I'll show you that when we get to that stage. Well, actually, by not, patting, by not tapping off, I've actually built it up a bit quicker. So, If you're doing your base afterwards, like I am, which I always do when I'm using a new palette, because I never know how much fallout I'm going to get, then it might be easier just to not tap off and just, you know, deal with the fallout, because that built up an awful lot quicker than this side did. To the point I'm going to go back in on this side and uh, try and make it match. There we go. Right, so I'm going to clean the colour off the brush. And I'm going to go in with, uh, that's quite a cool tone, so I think I'll go in with Coco, which is a brown on the, a cool tone brown on the bottom row. And we're going to start off exactly the same way, so we're going to do our wind, windscreen wipers first, through the crease. What we're going to do now uh, we're still going to do helicopters, but we're not going to travel up the eye. 
we're just going to keep in contact with that crease line across to the middle we're still going to reverse the direction but we're going to stay in contact with that crease line rather than moving up the eye and we're just going to go backwards and forwards doing that a couple of times just to really blend that colour out and then just tiny tiny little circles and buffing movements just where the two colours meet and if when you do that you're worried that uh, you're buffing away some of the lighter shade then clean your brush off, go back in get some more of the bisque and just buff with that shade okay You can see that just does add a little bit more definition to the eye. Now that has considerably more fallout. You can just leave your fallout and sweep it all away at once. And obviously, if you do your base first, then put powder down, loose powder, to catch any fallout. So let's go into cocoa again. Let me do that on this side. So again. Windscreen wiper backwards and forwards through the crease or wherever your crease line needs to be. And then pick up some more pigment and just twirly whirly helicopters backwards and forwards, gently blending that colour out. And I'm holding the brush right at the very end so I put as little pressure on my eye as possible because the skin on your eyelids is the thinnest skin in your body anywhere. I mean the average thickness of your skin is about two millimetres roughly. Um, the skin on your eyelids is kind of 0.05. The skin on your heels and your elbows can be up to four but you know your eyelids are very very sensitive and very very thin. So I'm just picking up a little bit of that bisque again, the first mauvey tone, just to buff over the edge of that brown. And again, I'm just going to, because it fidgets me when I'm editing, otherwise I keep wanting to flick it away when I'm editing, which obviously that doesn't work. Okay, so I'm going to clean this brush off now, and I'm going to move down to the more tapered blending brush. So if you've started with the tapered blending brush, now is the time to move down to the tapered crease brush that comes up to a point. And I'm going to dip into Marron, which is like a, a ready brown, I suppose, on the top, sort of like a purpley brown on the top row. And initially, I'm just going to pat that onto the outer third of my mobile lid. Just gently tap it on. And a really tiny little circular buffing movements just to see the tone. Okay. And then pick up a little bit more pigment on your brush. And again we're going to run that through the crease. Now at this time we are not going to add any more pigment to our brush and we're going to blend on the line itself making the circles as small as we can because all we're doing is trying to soften the line that we've put down. We're not trying to blend it out too far. We just want to soften it because the darker the tone the further back it looks. So if you have had to create your own crease. This will give you the effect of actually having an eye that recedes back in. Uh, and if you can hear that, that believe it or not was my neighbours putting a plug in. I don't know how they managed to make as much noise, I really don't. So we're going to do exactly the same thing this side. So we're going to pat it onto the outer third to start with. And then pick up a little bit more colour and run that through the crease and then very 
very gently buff that colour just to smudge the edging and I will show you what I mean in a minute about the sort of barcoding that I get with this eye so you can see there is still some slight white veining there where the creases were so deep do not pull your eye out like this unless you absolutely have to if the circular movements work for you please just use those because if you start pulling your eye out like I have to you will end up with um, deeper creasing which I can assure you only gets deeper as the years go on well, this eye thankfully because it wasn't pulled around as much I don't need to do that I'm just going to deepen up colour on this side here because I think I went a little bit heavier that side but as Bob Ross would say, there are no mistakes, just happy little accidents. And again, just really gentle buffing. Okay, now, with the, the Huda palette that dupes this one, and with this palette, the shimmers do work best using your finger. However, if you've got nails like me, you do not want to be sticking your finger anywhere near your eyes, especially when you only see with one of them already. So, I'm just going to... Because obviously being a red, it will stain. So, if you have got any bits that have gone like that, it's always best just to get them off. I am going to use this. Now this is a Revolution silicon brush. It came in a set of three. You've got this one, you got this one, and you got this one. Okay. Now this one is a bit thicker. This one's a little bit more flexible. So I'm going to go into rosy on the top row and you can see it picks up on here like it would do on your finger I'm just going to pop that without wetting it onto the middle section of my eye. I'm just going to get a smaller mirror just so I can see what I'm doing. Now this does flake a little bit. Um, you can get round that by putting a glitter glue down which uh, in retrospect I probably would have done. But I did want to show you that you can use it without a glitter glue but if you are going to use it without a glitter glue then I do suggest running it across like I've just done you do lose some of the brightness but it will get off the majority of the stuff that's going to fall down your face during the day right, pick up some more this side and do the same again And again, I'm getting quite a significant fallout as you can see, so you do really need to use glitter glues with these. Um, even if you're using your finger, I would advise using a glitter glue, I think. Because these are quite flaky as you can see but they do dust away quite easily so that's good to know and with this silicon brush unlike with your finger you do actually have control 
about where you're putting the colour. So you can actually, if you wanted to do a cut crease, you can do quite easily. And then I'm going to clean that brush off on the washcloth, as you can see. And I'm going to go into Blink. Wow, this one is really, really flaky. Oh, Lord, help me. Should have put a glitter glue on and bomb up. Now I'm just going to pop this on the inner third of my mobile lid. Now you can see, even though that's quite flaky and a light colour, it is actually covering the deeper matte shadow that was already in the crease. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to flip this over to the side that hasn't got any on it. I'm really going to gently just sort of drag one colour into the other and back again. Do that again with the other eye, and you can see these do pick up really, really well on the silicon brush. Now the problem that I have with this eye is because of the deep creasing. If I don't stretch the eye out, the shimmers sort of skim across the top of the creases. And then I get nothing but a waterfall of, of uh, shimmer coming down my eye all day. So I do have to actually, unfortunately, this side, stretch the lid out. And then buff the two colours into each other again as I did with the other eye and dust away the fallout. So I'm actually quite pleased with that. quite impressed with how well those shimmers actually applied because I wasn't sure um, how well they would do with you know using a silicon brush rather than using my finger I th scientifically I figured it should work but you know I'm the girl that blew the chemistry lab up so <laughs> don't trust me when it comes to science right I'm going to go off camera and do my foundation and everything. I'll be back to finish off this eye look with you. So please don't go anywhere. I'll see you well, instantly for you. Okay, I'm back. Now then, I'm going to use my flat top brush that I showed you earlier. Zoom in a little bit more. There we go. And I am going to go into let's go into brick on the top row I'm just going to smudge that as close as I can to my lash line going about two thirds of the way along I'm doing a foundation review today as well, so you will probably see this look in at least one other video. And then I've got an awful lot of editing to do. So I think that's what my face is going to be doing today. Editing while the rugby's on, because England play Wales. 
and uh, having been brought up by the Welsh side of the family, I shout for the Welsh dragons. I'm expecting to be hoarse come the check-in this afternoon for my foundation, but hey ho! Probably means my editing is going to take three times as long as well because I'm going to keep stopping to watch the action. But there you go. Right, I've got another flat top brush, but this is much thicker. And I'm going to go into, I think, peachy. I get the feeling that's a colour a lot of you would like. I'm just going to tap off well. I've just got it on the top bristles, as you can see. There you go, tap a little bit more off. I'm just going to buff that really gently along that line just to soften the line that we've got down there if you could see the face I'm putting right now <coughs> might add a little bit more actually brighten that up a little bit I must admit for a very you know, neutral palette, this is actually quite a nice look. Um, I think it would be a great sort of everyday work palette as well. Okay. Right. I am going to pause you one more time while I put... Uh, mascara and lippy on because you want to do that. Oh no, hang on. I haven't put any highlight on yet. So I'm going to go in with this. Is oh, I know he's getting very difficult to support now, but I've got a crap ton of his stuff, and I love, 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 love this particular shade of. Uh, highlighter from him this is sarcophagus and it's actually a white based champagne gold so if you're cool tone like me and very very pale you can actually wear this without it looking um, you know when you, when you turn your face to the side you see the highlight but when you face front you don't have like a darker strip Wow, I went home with the bronzer today, didn't I? Never mind. I like to take a little bit of it along the underside of my eye there, just because with the shape of my eye, I think it finishes it off nicely. And I'm just going to run a little bit up under the tail of my brow to uh, give the impression that they are higher than they are. That's my fern vibrating. Right. This time I'm going to pause you and put mascara lippy and sort the rest of my highlight out and I'll be back with my final thoughts. Right. Not quite sure what my fringe is doing today. It was sticking up like a coxcomb this morning. Uh, I think I've kind of got it almost under control, but if it starts springing back up again, just ignore it. So, what are my final thoughts on this? Um, obviously, I've not used all of the shades, but I have used all of the different textures, well, apart from this concealer down here. Um, because I didn't want to. I wanted to use a base that I know how shadows work on it so I can actually properly assess this. Um, pretty much like every other Beauty Glaze palette, some shades need um, a little bit of building up, but they do blend out well, they blend well together. Um, you know, you. <laughs> You can get some very pretty, very neutral, very work appropriate looks with this palette. Like I said, originally, when they first started selling this, the cardboard cover was just silver, uh, gold like this. After the Huda one came out, which looks to be an absolute 
copy, it has to be said. They did redo the sleeve so that it has her eyes on it and so it kind of matches the other two um, dupe palettes they did where they did in fact dupe her rather than the other way around. Um, according to this, this is distributed by JC Brackets HK International Cosmetics Limited uh, in Hong Kong. Um, 24 month shelf life, cruelty free. So, first two, first ingredients are mica, talc, silica, and mineral oil. So, if that bothers you, don't pick it up. Gotta be honest, if I need to pick up a palette for a really quick look that's kind of day appropriate, I probably would pick this up. Because they, you know, they're blended out fine. There's no problem with them at all. Yes, I've got palettes that perform better, but the majority of those palettes cost a lot more than this did. Um, and, you know, from the look of it, you'll be able to get exactly the same looks with this palette as you would do with the Huda one. But you could probably buy ten of these for the price of one Huda. Do I think it's ironic that they duped her first two and then she duped this one? Yeah, a little bit. But then Too Faced did that with Chocolate Gold Bar, didn't they? Makeup Rev copied Too Faced, so Too Faced copied Makeup Rev. But, to be quite honest, as I've said before, this is not claiming to be the Huda palette. It clearly says Beauty Glazed and it's perfect, not the new nudes. I don't have an issue with dupe palettes, even though this one came out first, but in the overall scheme of things, I don't have an issue with dupe palettes, because it's no different to Chanel sending a dress down the runway and two weeks later Topshop have got it. You know, it's... Every single business that has a high-end, a medium and then a budget range, you know, you can buy Heinz baked beans or you can buy own brand baked beans, or you can buy value baked beans. It's still the same. I have an issue if this said Huda Beauty, no nudes, then I'd have an issue because then you couldn't guarantee what's in it. But the majority of these dupe palettes, particularly if they're from a company that you recognise, so like uh, in terms of the ones on uh, Wish and AliExpress, the two brands that I really do trust and so far, touch wood, haven't ever had a reaction to any of their shadows is Beauty Glazed and Thamar D, which is spelled like that. Now I don't have a problem with either of these two brands, however, whenever I get a palette from Wish or from AliExpress or even to a certain extent from Amazon, when I swatch them, I leave those swatches on my arm for at least 12 hours to see if I get any kind of reaction from them before they go anywhere near my face. And I would advise you to do the same thing if you are worried or if you have really sensitive skin. Uh, overall, do I suggest this palette? Yeah, if you like the colour scheme, then, you know, why not? Works for me. Right, hope that was helpful uh, and informative. If it was, it would be awesome if you could hit that like button for me. Comment, share, subscribe. When you subscribe, don't forget to ring my bell. Ring my bell. Apparently I've forgotten how to click today. And choose all notifications so that you get told every time that I upload another one of these films. And talking of another one of these films. I've got an awful lot for you to choose from. Um, as I said, I've been going for a year now. Oh no, I said that in my other film actually. I said that in the foundation of you. The day I'm recording this is the one year anniversary of my first ever video going live on YouTube. So there's an awful lot of videos that I put up in that year. Um, so it'd be great if you pop over and check out some of the ones you may have missed. And once you've watched all of mine, It'd be great if you could check out some of the girlies from the Beauty YouTuber Growth Group, who as ever are listed in my description box below. 
and have produced some pretty damn awesome films just recently. Right, as ever, all that remains for me to say is your stay fabulous. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you.